On this episode of DPV, we're building the fab table with my Weld Pro MIG 155. Welcome to DPV. If you're new here, thank you so much for being here. This week, we are building the fab table, finally. So, I picked up this big old piece of steel plate. It's uh, three quarter inches thick. It's about three foot by four foot. Um, and then I had all this angle iron just kind of laying around from other projects. Um, I think this was from a lumber rack. The, this um, powder coated stuff I got from a job when I was a carpenter. So um, we're gonna use it to build a fab table so I don't have to put it on the ground anymore. The tools we're gonna need for this job, speed square, tape measure, fat max every time, angle grinder, and this sweet little welder I picked up on Amazon, the WellPro MIG 155. I did a small starter project with this welder. Um, I'll link that right up here. Um, just some plow disc cookers, kind of fun. It really levels up Taco Tuesday. But now we're gonna be welding a you know, all quarter inch material to a three quarter inch plate. And this really has to be strong because that top plate is about 330 pounds. Um, so it's a lot of weight and I'm going to be pounding on this thing when we actually build cool stuff like, you know, bumpers, rock sliders, that kind of stuff. Today we're going to be just cutting up the metal um, for, for the frame. If you've been following me at all, you know that right now I've got two little girls that are doing online school because of the whole COVID business. And so there's a good chance I'll have some little ones interrupt me here and there. So today, get the metal cut. Tomorrow, next day, start welding it together. So let's get cutting. leave it around about four inches of overhang around the perimeter there um, so I got something good to clamp to <laughs> when I'm building stuff on this table because uh, if you if you bring your frame all the way close to the edge it's hard to get C clamps around um, to the angle iron so you want you want a little bit of overhang on your table so you got something good to clamp clamp your work to so uh, I'm gonna clean up these edges with flap disc and uh, get this all laid out and clamped on there. But first of all, I've got the cutting wheels on. Uh, I'm gonna cut my legs. We're gonna make this table uh, about, I want it to be 36 inches tall. That's like counter height. When it's all finished, for, for now it's gonna be 32 inches tall because I plan on putting some really heavy duty casters on the bottom of, of the, uh, the legs, I don't have those yet. I'm guessing they're gonna be about four inches. Um, I, I'm sure I can get something close enough to that. Once the legs go on, then I also want to build another frame to put like a shelf down low. Um, that will tie the legs together so they don't fold over easy. And give me a place to you know put the welder, put um, other fab tools, clamps, that kind of stuff. Got my upper frame cut, 
got the legs cut. Um, we're ready to start welding this thing up. But I got to go teach my kids how to read and write for a little bit. So I'll see you tomorrow. We'll fire up the welder, start welding this thing together. All right, we're back after it. Another day of fabbing. Going to clamp this frame together. Start with the uh, you know the upper frame. Get it clamped together. Get it tacked together. And then I think I'm going to clamp it real good to that plate. Um, so that way uh, it stays nice and square. Could even, um, after it's tacked together, make sure it's nice and square. I could actually just tack it to the plate um, instead of messing with clamps. Then it should stay nice and flat. Get that welded up solid and then we'll get the legs um, legs clamped on, tacked on, welded up solid. So like I said earlier in the video, we're going to be using this Weld Pro MIG 155. It also does stick. And so I think I'll be tacking the thing, the thing together with the wire feed. Um, but then when it comes to the, you know, the longer passes, I think I'm going to switch to stick for two reasons. One, I think it's going to have a stronger weld. Um, using you know the 332 rod or eighth inch rod um, also I have a lot of welding rod and this is going to take quite a bit of welding to put together um, I don't want to burn through all my wire uh, when I have plenty of welding rod and in the test video you know I was pretty impressed with the stick capabilities of this thing even plugged into 110 all right let's get after it Two pounds of wire does not go very far. Holy cow. All I did was build those uh, plow disc cookers and I'm already out. That is crazy. Now I'm going to be forced to use the stick feature of this welder because I'm out of wire. Um, that's good to know. All the reviews on this thing, that was the biggest complaint was the, the spool size. it was getting pretty smoky in here um, I do have a question for you guys for those of you that do quite a bit of welding do you have a suggestion on a respirator that is comfortable and fits under you know the welding helmet and um, any suggestions on what the best auto darkening he helmet is uh, best bang for your buck like I'm not sure I want to go Harbor Freight because um, it is kind of like an eye protection thing. You know, I want it to do well. I've had this helmet, I think since junior high. So like 20 some years. Um, so yeah, my, my dad got me this back when I was just a youngin. Um, it's time for an upgrade. I'd really like to get an auto darkening helmet. So if you have any suggestions on best bang for your buck, auto darkening helmet, leave a comment below and the respirator issue. So for now, uh, just gonna set a fan, have the door open, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and weld up this upper frame solid. For some reason I keep tripping breakers, um, so trying a different outlet. Really probably should run this thing off an extension cord, but it's my only option right now. Let's see if this does a little better. If this doesn't work, 
Um, I'm probably just going to try to tack it together now and then get some temporary 220 ran. Um, try to run this thing off 220, I think it'll do a little better. Keep throwing the breaker, even on a different a different outlet. So, ah, uh, kind of sucks. I think I have one that can pop good enough for now. Uh, I can always flip it over later. Um, my vertical sucks. I need to practice that on stick. Um, so I'm not gonna weld up the rest of these corners. <laughs> Definitely not getting it hot enough uh, for this three quarter, um, but I think it'd be all right. Now we're gonna go ahead and tack on these legs. Um, start making it look like a table here. It's only a two and a half inch pass on each leg, so I might be able to space out or tie my welds out far enough apart to not be throwing the breaker. At least get these legs on solid. And then we got to uh, build that lower lower shelf thing to tie the legs together. All right, back at it. Some of you guys are probably thinking, gosh, this guy and you're not far off. Um, so when I was talking about how fast this thing was going through wire, well, it turns out the roll that it came with was not two pounds. It was only a half a pound. So um, I bought an, a new roll, uh, a full two pound roll. So it should last a lot longer. Long enough for what I'm gonna do. And I thought about, oh, it'd be cool to like try to mount away on the back of this thing to you know mount like a 10 pound roll or something but I don't think it's worth it to risk ruining the warranty and whatnot I'll just buy a bunch of two pound rolls but two pounds should last a lot longer than half a pound so um, also I was kicking the breaker off a ton using this thing on uh, the stick mode so um, we're just gonna try wire feed I had zero issues with the breaker popping um, with that Cloudus project using the wire feed and I was able to you know turn the heat down quite a bit with the wire feed setting um, with the stick I had to turn the heat up quite a bit in order to get the arc to strike the rod is a lot thicker compared to the wire um, so it takes a little bit more juice to get that arc to struck so uh, we're going to try to get these next two legs on and I'm just going to roll it up solid with the wire piece setting and uh, see how it goes. <laughs> Quite a bit of welding before we uh, trip the breaker again, so definitely better with the wire feed. Um, I think the welds are turning out really nice too, um, compared to my stick welds. Um, stick welder, yeah, I think it really needs to be on the 220 setting to work well. But this wire feed setting is working out great. Um, so I'm gonna get these legs finished up, weld up the uh, the inside on the legs and uh, then we'll cut up some of that one inch square tubing to build a little shelf around the bottom there um, and then get this sucker flipped over I'm just about done I'm super excited this is gonna make every project in the future easier 
fab work and mechanic work. You know, um, my my little shed over at the old property had a nice bench. It was like you know, 14 feet long, um, solid wood, and like I man, a bench is so important when you're doing you know work on your rigs. So uh, it's going to be like. Here, I don't have a bench anywhere and so I've been working on the floor um, and I want to you know rebuild that transmission for the Jeep and build that doubler and stuff and I don't want to do it on the ground so this would be good for fab work and it's also going to be good for mechanic work so pretty excited and you know because we're renting this place um, I didn't want to build something that was permanently in place because that doesn't doesn't make sense this is going to be portable to the next the next house after we buy some property and build that dream shop um, so yeah I'll be able to load this sucker up and uh, instantly have a fab table slash bench in the next shop all right got the legs all welded up um, so now I'm going to cut up this square tubing here um, this was left over from an awning that was on our old house when we bought it, man, that thing was ugly. But I thought, you know, this ain't bad square tubing, I'll keep it around. I've been packing this crap around for like, I don't know, eight or ten years. Uh, but that's all right. Now we're going to use it. So um, I'm all out of cutoff wheels, and um, school's about to start, so can't really leave the house. We're going to try to cut this with the sawzall. Um, it should work out alright if I clamp it to the fab table, even though the fab table is upside down. So one nice thing about having a super heavy fab table is it shouldn't shake around too much when something's clamped to it and you cut it with a sawzall or something because the weight of the table should hold it from shaking too much. We'll see if that theory is correct. I'm done welding for today. Get a quick cleanup. I'm gonna get this garage door open, um, let all the smoke out, and then uh, get this thing flipped over with the, with the cherry picker. <laughs> Kind of the biggest things you want to pay attention to is you make sure that your the stuff you're using to rig is strong enough for the job. This chain is definitely strong enough. This, this table is heavy, but it's not that heavy. Um, the other thing, never get under the load and have an exit plan. I actually got had the opportunity to take a rigging class back when I was uh, you know full-time commercial carpenter. So I, I got to learn a lot about this stuff, um, but in this situation, a lot of those principles don't matter that much. Like you don't want this angle to be too narrow because you can, um, you know, crush your load or or um, decrease the strength of your your strap or your chain. 
but like I said, this isn't that heavy. Um, what I did do though, is make sure that I was on both sides of this, um, <clears throat> these legs, that way when the table kind of flips over, uh, the chain isn't just gonna slide off, you know, slide off into the table, hopefully. So that goes back to have an exit plan. <laughs> Actually, be a decent height just the way it is. So, but the casters are going to bring it up another four inches, just th think it would still be okay. Um, but if I don't like that, if it if I think it's too high with those casters, I did leave enough room underneath the little shelf to you know cut off the cut off the bottom of the legs. So, oh man, that's gonna be good. <laughs> Pretty good. I think that this is gonna, it's gonna be real handy. You can get the grinder and uh, you know soften up these edges here so nobody cuts themselves. I'm not sure if these will stay on there. I think I want to make it so these can quick quickly come off if I need you know the whole table. But uh, be, will be nice to you know, have my drill press again and bench grinder. But again, if I need the whole surface. Be nice to be able to take them off quickly. Um, honestly, you know, with the impact, even if it was bolted, it only take like three minutes to pull them off at that. Um, so that's cool. Um, I'm thinking about, you know, building another shelf. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe at the height where the welder can fit here, um, just so I can maximize the use of this space. Um, Maybe put a bar on this side, hang some clamps there, um, put a hook on it somewhere to, uh, you know, hang my helmet. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. I think it's going to really be handy. Um, so the next fab project is going to be building that desk for the kiddos. We've got a tabletop from Ikea, and then we're just going to use uh, some angle iron that I've got laying around um, to build the frame. And uh, now I've got this sweet fab table to make it happen. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Wheel it, wreck it, wrench it, repeat. See you next time.